Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Sunday. All right, right to radar, and we are in it now. Pretty high dry period, big area of high pressure here sitting across the Intermountain West. It continues to actually build, and the temperatures will heat up over the next few days. This high uh, is going to be in place probably through the 12th, and then we'll start to see a storm system uh, hit the West Coast, and that'll start to break down the high and move it away. But it's going to be a pretty warm, dry uh, three or four days ahead here across a lot of the West. Here's a water vapor satellite imagery. And a couple of things to mention. So your dry airs and the blacks, the oranges and the reds. Um, now look at this. This is a very large storm system out here in the Pacific. And you can see what's happening. The flow is going straight to the north and the parts of BC. Your moisture on this is in the whites and the blues. So a couple of things going on here. This low is going to sit and it's going to spin. It's a ridge builder because it's pushing all of this energy to the north. And you can kind of see the ridge starting to take shape right here. Everything's going up and around it. And we're starting to develop what's going to happen out to the east. A deep area of low pressure, snow, and record cold out there. Now, eventually, this is the low that's going to move into the west coast around the 13th. And then eventually, it will send energy in to the Intermountain West with colder air and snow, 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, and beyond. But that's how it's going to play out. Here are my bullet points. So we've got the big western high that's coming in and the deep eastern low, record cold, snow, the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic, and even the deep south, 11, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then it will break. Uh, west probably turns more active after the 13th, 14th, somewhere in there. And you can see the best odds of snow here for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So for example, in Colorado, little bit of snow coming on the 14th. Better shot, 11, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Some snow in Idaho there, 13 through 17, and also on the 19th. I won't go through all of those dates. Um, and there's really nothing to show on the forecast radar with this big area of high pressure. So let's dive into the atmospheric pressure anomaly. So this is effective uh, on Monday. Uh, this is the 10th. This is the day where we have this uh, big bowling ball of low pressure. You can see, I mean, these, we're running like four standard deviations below the 20-year norm as far as pressure anomalies go. That's what you're looking at, highs and lows here. Big dip in the jet sitting right here over the east all the way down to Florida. And there's our big high, um, really just continuing to build across a lot of the west. Moving down the road, let me clear that. Let's go to the 14th. So this is on Friday the 14th. Our high has moved to the east and been dislodged. And look at the pressure drop right here across the west coast. That area of low pressure is hitting California and it's pushing waves of energy and moisture in to the interior Rockies at that point. And the final uh, right here, this is 1116. So what has happened? The flow has split. Some of the energy is going north. Some of it's going to the south. You can see this drop in pressures here over New Mexico, Arizona, and the Four Corners. So that'll be interesting. We'll get some snow that goes north into BC and the Pacific Northwest, and we'll get some snow that goes into parts of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and also New Mexico as we kind of slide into that period. Um, so let me look at this is the forecast for integrated vapor transport, Central California coast. This is what draws my attention around the 13th. That's the storm system that hits California, and that will likely bring a moderate to maybe even strong push of atmospheric river moisture with it. So it's going to hit California in the high Sierra pretty hard, and then it will send some of that moisture uh, into the interior Rockies after that. In fact, here is your total precipitation forecast five days out, five to six days out. So this will take us all the way into um, next weekend. So you can see initially, I mean, there's nothing. It's all high pressure. Then the dam breaks, and we start to see, look at all of the precip. This is as if everything fell as rain. The West Coast gets hit hard, 13, 14, 15, and then it starts to send that moisture into the interior Rockies. All right, here's your snow forecast, 10 to 1 ratio, through the same period, through next weekend, basically. So you can see initially, it's very dry, high pressure. Then we start to see, look at the push of moisture and snow there across the high Sierra. And then some of it begins to move into the interior Rockies there. 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. I mean, and you, anywhere you see the purple shade, that's over six inches. 
at least a six. And where you see the bright pink sets a foot and where you see the whites like right there over the top of the, uh, the high Sierra, that's a couple of feet. And also up here to the coastal range, that's a couple of feet uh, up over the top of Rainier. And then potentially um, maybe 8 to 16 or maybe even more up there in the interior parts of BC over the, that's one of the trickiest things. And that, you know, one of the trickiest things this time of the year is the rain snow line because we're still technically in fall. So it's like you really have to be high up at this, uh, this stage to get the best snow. So let's look at the actual my snow forecast. So it's it's now time to start doing this. And again, it, this is tricky, you know. It, it's like you really have to be mid-mountain and higher to get the best accumulation. So the timeline for this is 11.9 through 11.16. Basically, this is total snow accumulation through the 16th. So what do you got? Initially, it's very dry, right? And all of these big numbers come later in the period. They come as you get closer to essentially 13, 14, 15, and 16. But we're looking at potentially, you know, one to two feet of accumulation here over the high Sierra. I've got potentially three feet over Shasta. I've got two to three feet up here in the heart of the Pacific Northwest, uh, through Whistler, through Baker, through Crystal, through Timberline, Hood, Bachelor. Now in the interior, this is going to be, you know, it always is tricky, but this will be a rain snow line issue because I've got 10 to 20 here through a lot of interior BC. That again, you're got you got to be higher up. Um, maybe eight over Sunshine, a foot in Fernie, 20 up in Marmot. Uh, pretty good through central to northern Idaho at the highest of elevations. Less though right here because remember, the flow is going to split late in the period where some of the moisture goes up to the north and some of it goes down to the south. So that might leave a drier pocket here through the 16th through a lot of Wyoming and southern Idaho. Probably four to eight here across uh, a lot of the Wasatch. In Colorado, there's a little bit across the western slope, but more is going to be accumulating down here if that flow and does split with probably six to eight inches across the San Juans, Taos, Ski Santa Fe, and beyond. Even three to four brine head down to Snow Bowl. So again, that's total snow accumulation through the 16th. All right, let's jump to the um, let's jump to the northeast. Here's your rolling accumulation. Uh, this is actually technically, this should read five day snow forecast. So this will take us through next weekend. This is a five day snow forecast through the 16th. Um, and notice there's our snow on Monday and Tuesday with some lake effect off of Michigan, Erie, Ontario, um, and pretty good snow here. Look at that. New Hampshire, Vermont. I mean, Jay Peak's been in great condition. Mont Tremblant up there. You're going to get some snow accumulation. So how does that actually look? As far as snow accumulation, well, here's my here's my snow forecast through the 16th. Um, in some places, get 8 to 12 inches of accumulation up here into a lot of uh, Vermont, Mont Tremblant, Jay Peak, Stowe, Sugarbush, Mad River. All continue this great run that you've had, maybe 10 over Washington. But the issue here across a lot of uh, Maine could be a rain snow line issue. Um, if it's colder, you'll get more than this, but this is, uh, you know, this is assuming there's going to be some rain mixing in and then potentially, in a, and there's also a rain snow issue there around Snow Ridge. I think you might get a foot, but if there's rain mixing in, you're probably going to get less. So here's just a quick look at your snow uh, plumes. This is Jay Peak. Again, look at these excellent numbers. This runs all the way through the 24th. Some of these error bars are up around 18 inches, but uh, that's Jay Peak. <laughs> Um, here's Mount Washington. Pretty similar, you know, your accumulates about a foot over time. The error bars are up around 18. This takes us all the way out through November 24th. So this is this is what you call an ensemble mean right there when you see that 12. This is a this is the product of a lot of different model runs. Here's Jackson, Wyoming. Very quiet through the 13th and the 14th. Again, that flow is going to split initially with high pressure there, and then eventually the numbers start to pick up very late in the period. Last stop is going to be in Colorado. This is Berthoud Pass. Um, again, just really sad, very quiet there through probably the 14th, maybe even the 15th with that big area of high pressure and very dry. And then the numbers start to accelerate up as we get later into the period. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this mountain weather update on the Sunday. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.